Hello everybody and welcome to Critical Thinking. In this video we'll go over what is in the course and what's required of you so that you may perform to the best of your ability. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this asynchronous course right here and shift over to the student view so you can see uh, the course here the way you'll see it on your own computer. Now this is an eight week course that we're looking at and uh, the modules in the course are set up by the week. Uh, if you're taking a uh, if you're taking a course that's that has a live meeting component, whether on Zoom or in person, uh, there will be uh, th this layout is going to be a little different. But we'll get to that later. So this is an eight-week course, and therefore there are eight modules. Pretty straightforward. Up top we have the general information and I suggest the very first thing you do is read all the way through the syllabus. I know that this isn't the most fun part of what you could be doing but it's actually very important. So at the top we have the general information, then we have the course description, the learning outcomes, and then you have contact information for me. Uh, generally speaking, uh, if you use the Canvas inbox, in other words message me through Canvas not by email, uh, I see that first. Uh, the average response time is anywhere from an hour to 72 hours, which is three days. So if you're going to email me, make sure you give yourself enough time uh, for me to get to your email and to get back to you. The office hours are all held through Zoom. So you email me, let me know that you would like to meet. You'll let me know when you're available. Uh, and then we go from there. Uh, my office hours, in other words, when I'll be around, is Tuesdays between 12 and 1 p.m. The required materials for this book include a textbook, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, you will obviously need uh, some way of accessing all this material. You will need Microsoft Word and uh, a functional browser. Then we have uh, student support services, depending on what sort of service you might uh, want access to. It's all listed here. I highly suggest you take advantage of this because you're paying for it anyway. Uh, course policies, uh, plagiarism, uh, anytime you use somebody else's idea or somebody else's work without giving them the credit, uh, that is plagiarism. Uh, even if you use your own material written for a previous class, it's actually considered plagiarism academically, so don't uh, do that. If you are caught, and you will be caught because it takes me about two sentences to figure out that somebody plagiarized, uh, the result is going to be that you're going to fail the course. One thing I like to note to my students, all of your assignments can be turned in late, and if you turn them in late, you lose a couple of points for being late. But if you plagiarize and you get caught, you fail the course. So at no point is it actually worth trying to plagiarize for the class, so please don't do that. Uh, occasionally I'll put up announcements uh, they will be at the very front of the course, so everybody will be able to see that. Uh, respect for diversity, no hate speech, this is all standard, Title IX content. And uh, now, in terms of our assignments, uh, I have an entire separate document, which we'll get to next, that deals with how to do each assignment, so that way the syllabus isn't overcluttered and you only have one document to go to. Um, we do, in fact, have quizzes, so I'm going to have to revise this. And then here is our uh, schedule. So it's an eight-week schedule, and what we'll be doing is we're going essentially just chapter by chapter of the book. Uh, we have four additional uh, articles that we're going to read as we go along. So each week you have a module, you have a quiz on that module, and you have a discussion that's due on that module. And you'll see that that follows all the way through through all eight weeks of the course. Now here you have additional assignments all the way in the right hand column and you have a response assignment due in week two and a response assignment due in week five. You have three shredder assignments, they're due week six, seven, and eight. And you have a closing statement assignment which is due at the end of the course and uh, so that's that. Now in week three you'll also have a chance to earn some extra credit in the antiquities uh, section and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, grading policy, uh, this course has no grade curve. Whatever you earn is what you ultimately get. And notice please that uh, 
if you get an 89.9, that's still a B because it goes all the way out to sort of infinity. It's not until you cross over into the next digit that the grade can change. All right, so that covers the syllabus. Let's go ahead and hop back and I will show you the assignment guide. <clears throat> So uh, the assignment guide is going to give you a walkthrough of every single thing that we do. Uh, I strongly suggest you read this uh, intro part because it really explains what it is that we are uh, all about uh, for the course. And you'll notice that each section for each assignment gives you a why section so you understand why it is that you're doing an assignment and then it also gives you a how to uh, complete that section. All of our assignments are going to be due on Fridays by midnight, so uh, make sure you do that. That's if you're in the asynchronous classes. If you are in the uh, synchronous classes, so if you have a Zoom meeting or an in-person class with me, then those assignments are always due the night before we meet. So if we meet, say, of argument Tuesday and Thursday, your assignments would be due Monday and Wednesday. Um, Right, and there's also a section on each part explaining how you lose points in, uh, in an area. Uh, anything that's highlighted, pay special attention to that. Again, that'll give you the, the, the deadlines, it will give you the word counts, uh, anything else that you could possibly uh, screw up and therefore lose points on, and there's no reason to lose points. Um, right response uh, as you'll see you'll have a, uh, a sample there that you can use uh, to orient yourself on the responses because they're a little bit larger and they carry more uh, over your grade the shredder assignments will walk you through uh, each of the three assignments will explain what it is that you're doing um, again all of that's in detail the very last thing you want to note here is the your grade uh, section that's because uh, the canvas grade is usually incorrect and there's an explanation here of why it's incorrect and there's also an explanation of how to actually check your grade so that you know what you're actually getting in the class now I'll just read this part because it's true for every single semester I've ever taught inevitably at the end of the semester I get emails about how someone who's failing the class just needs to pass a class and they'll tell me that their scholarship depends on it, that their staying in college depends on it, that their ability to participate in athletics depends on it, and all the rest of that. Um, however, we don't have a curve, and I don't grant anybody points. Whatever you earn is the grade that you get. And that's because, frankly, everybody else also needs to pass this class. Now, if you happen to have some sort of a legitimate issue and you need an extension or something along those lines, if you know about it ahead of time, you need to contact me ahead of time. And if it's a sort of emergency that just comes up, then you need to contact me as soon as possible, right? Because generally speaking, I can help you about issues that are either in progress or they will come up. And it's a lot harder for me to help you when you let me know the last week of the semester that the reason why you didn't do stuff the first week of the semester is whatever it is so it's your responsibility to handle that and it's my responsibility to work with you to the best of my ability so don't forget to do your part uh, knowing all the things uh, in both of these documents is your responsibility if you don't understand something you have to ask me to clarify for you right and I have to clarify to you if you don't understand something ask a question immediately ask me ask your classmates ask whoever right but get a meaningful clarification there's absolutely no reason why you should be losing points in this class all right so with that let's go ahead and hop back home so i can walk you through a couple of other things right uh occasionally like as with these uh, articles down here in week one like the highlighted one uh, when you click on them they will not open and instead what you're going to get is something that looks like this it will say you're trying to launch an insecure uh, insecure content from within a secure site canvas and it won't open so what you do is you click on that on the name of whatever it is that you are trying to open and it will take you there so let me show you how that works in practice so if we click on the diversity here and uh, See, 
Ta-da, it won't let you open it directly. So you click on the name of the thing and then it will take you to a different tab on a different site in order to get to get access. So uh, in terms of the book that we're using, you can go ahead and get the book. See, again, here it's not opening. So I'm just going to click on the name up here and that will take me to Amazon. Now, if you would like a physical copy of the book, it takes a little while for that to arrive um, and it costs about 40 bucks if you're buying new. Um, you can find them used from about 30, but frankly, the Kindle edition is 9.99 and that makes honestly a lot more sense. Um, you don't need to own a Kindle to get a Kindle edition. You can download the free Kindle app on any digital device and read the content that way. Uh, and the additional upside is that there is no shipping time and there is no shipping charges. So that would be my uh, suggestion to all of you. Back up and see what else we have. Uh, in the back of the book, there is uh, this flowchart that we're going to get to, but uh, in the printed copy, it's not quite as nice as it should be. So here is the very large version of that uh, document so that you can uh, see it sort of zoomed in. Uh, it's just going to take a little while to load because it's a very large document. So that is the flowchart that we will be referencing and you should know that it is uh, in part of the general information. So how does this work? Well for each week what you're going to do is the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the module focus, right? So there's module one focus, module two focus. You click on the focus and that takes you to a page that asks you a bunch of questions that you should be thinking about as you are reading the content. And that sort of helps direct your focus in the readings as to what you're doing. Now you'll notice that the these two sections here, the critical thinking book, introduction and chapter one, you can't click on them. And that's because there's nothing linked to them. They just tell you what you should go and read from the book. So you need access to the book in order to go and read. After that, in week one, we have these two links to uh, separate articles that you can go and read. In fact, you have to go and read. And then we have a quiz that is directly on the content of whatever is the assigned reading. And once you're done with that, you're going to move on to the discussion. So the quiz is pretty straightforward. It's, it's multiple choice or two false, fill in the blank, that sort of stuff. So once you get around to the discussion, for the discussion, you're supposed to take something that interested you about the readings and uh, talk about it directly, right? Now, if you get to the discussion part and you're not sure what you should write about, you're also welcome to use at least some of the questions here in the focus and talk about them, right? And that might help you out. So when you get around the discussion, it will look like this. Now, this is because nobody's posted anything yet. And uh, you click on that reply button and then you go ahead and you type out your discussion. And when you're done with that, uh, by the way, notice down here at the bottom right, you can see your word count. Uh, you need 250 word count for discussions. And then you can go ahead and hit post reply. Now, if I had logged in now and here's somebody else who had typed out something, uh, you, won't, you won't be able to see other people's posts until you make your own. Once you make your own, I highly suggest you actually read through other people's uh, discussion posts as well. It's very uh, usefully educational. All right, so let's get down to other things. So for this module one, you're going to read the introduction chapter of the book, chapter one of the book, these two articles, and then you're going to take your quiz and you're going to do your discussion and you're going to do all of that by midnight of January 20th, which is uh, a Friday. Then you're going to start in on week two stuff. And again, you are going to have a module focus, which is going to tell you what to think about as you're doing this work. You're going to read chapters two and three. You're going to do the quiz. You're going to do the discussion. And in week two, you have your first of two response papers. Now, you'll go to the assignment guide, you'll read about what responses are, and here you actually also have a response sample that you can take a look at to sort of see what a good response looks like. Uh, 
So you'll have something to draw on. And then you're going to go into the response space. Now, when you upload your responses, they either need to be in a uh, Word file or in PDF. That way I can access them. If you upload them as anything else, it will, if it lets you upload them as anything else, I won't be able to open that. And then uh, you'll get a zero until you resubmit it in a functional form. So don't do that. That's a really good way to just lose points for no reason. Now, notice here after module three, we have a little extra credit module and you can take a look at wanting to do February 3rd. So it's the same Friday as module three. There's the reading, there's the extra credit, and uh, that's all that you're doing. All right, um, so that's, that's that if you have, uh, if you're taking this class asynchronously. If you're taking it synchronously, so let's go ahead and uh, hop into a synchronous class over here and shift the student view. Uh, you, what you will have, uh, I guess it's not up yet, but it will be here. Uh, there will be a, a link that says our Zoom meetings are here. You're going to click there so that you can participate in our Zoom sessions. And that's about it. All right, if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and shoot me uh, an email and I will get back to you. That's about it. Uh, best of luck and uh, I'll see you in class.